Now, where does this all begin? And we know that the onset epoch for mental health problems is in youth. So if we're going to try and prevent depression at a public health level, we can't start early enough. And data in adolescence is compelling. Unlike the data in adults, one of the things that separates the data in adolescence is the magnitude of the difference between uh, an, uh, an unhealthy diet and a, and a healthy diet. So in this graph, you can see the those uh, adolescents who had the lowest intake of healthy foods. So that's, these are the guys up here. And had, they had by far the highest scores. The people who had the highest intake of healthy diet had the lowest rates of depression. And independent of that, those people, those people who had the highest intake of unhealthy foods, that's over here, they had by far the highest risk factors, uh, the risk for the development of depression. Important in epidemiology is there's many things that can confound this. So age, gender, parental work status, socioeconomic status, family conflicts, poor family management, uh, physical activity, smoking, all of these things are confounds. Uh, we know that those families who have high rates of one risk factor are likely to have high rates of many risk factors. So these data are adjusted statistically for all these confounds, and it still holds up. But the impact of diet actually is earlier than that. Uh, and it's possible that early life nutritional exposures impact the mental health of children. Uh, so the, the best and the first study that was done on this was Felisa's study uh, from um, the Norwegian MOBA study. MOBA stands for Mother Baby Study. So Felice got hold of a data set of 23,000 mother baby pairs. And we were able to look at pre and postnatal diet, both healthy and unhealthy, independently, and the children's mental health at 18 months, 36 months, and five years. And again, on the left-hand side, you can see all the variables that the study was able to adjust and control for. So age, education, income, marital status, maternal depression and anxiety, because obviously that's a big risk factor. Smoking, role, parity, gestational length, etc. In essence, what we found was that higher intakes of unhealthy foods, so more junk food, by mums when they were pregnant led to their offspring having higher rates of externalizing behavior. So this is independent of everything else. If, they had, if the kids had more unhealthy foods in the earliest years of life, they had more internalizing and externalizing behaviors later on. And as I said, these things operate to some degree independently. Lower intakes of healthy foods were related to increased risk of both internalizing and externalizing the behaviors in children. Again, striking findings need striking replication. And this has been replicated a number of times. I'm going to show you a few of these studies, all essentially showing that uh, maternal diet during pregnancy alters the risk of uh, mental health problems in the offspring. So if you look at uh, a, a, a Mediterranean pattern or a traditional Dutch pattern, there's this clear uh, association, uh, inverse association between unhealthy diet, healthy diet, uh, and risk for mental health disorders. Another very large study published in the British Journal of Psychiatry looked at 7,000 mother baby pairs and again found pretty much exactly the same thing, that dietary symptoms during pregnancy, so, uh, sorry, depressive symptoms during pregnancy were associated with worse diet, and that uh, both unhealthy diets and low intakes of healthy food were associated with impaired cognition as well as emotional dysregulation in the offspring. And this was again independent of a whole range of factors that were controlled for. So we're now at the point where again, in terms of early life diet and cognitive and emotional functioning in kids, we have a meta-analytic level of evidence that a better quality of maternal diet has a significant impact on child neurodevelopment, both in terms of cognitive functioning as well as emotional functioning. 
I'm not going to spend much time talking about animal studies, but they essentially tell us much the same thing, that a diet has a profound impact on many of the neurobiological pathways that modulate mood. So we know that d diet quality influences the methylation pattern and patterns of gene expression of key mono, uh, neurotransmitters like dopamine and opiate genes. And we know that uh, it also leads to perturbations in the serotonergic system. Uh, this results in increased anxiety in females in animal studies and increased aggression in males. So internalizing type symptoms in female rat uh, pr uh, and preclinical studies and uh, aggression in males. We also, this, the preclinical animal studies also tell us that increased sympathetic nervous system activity persists into adulthood. Um, and that if we look at those pathways that I'm particularly interested in, which is uh, neurogenesis, oxidative stress, and inflammation, that if you wean offspring of rats onto a high fat, high sugar diet, lead to persistent upregulation of inflammatory oxidative pathways and a reduction in neurogenesis, as well as the presence of mitochondrial dysfunction. So all the new biological pathways that we now think are driving depression in humans are dysregulated in preclinical animal studies by poor quality diet.